Now, let's look at some good sources of protein. Of course, meat, such as beef and pork, and fish, chicken. Cottage cheese is also an excellent source, although it does contain some sugar. Fat-free cottage cheese is absolutely excellent. You can't beat it for convenience. You don't have to prepare it. You just grab it from the fridge, stick a spoon in it, and eat. Eggs. Eggs are excellent. They do contain some fat, but that's actually good fat. It's an excellent source of many things, so you can eat eggs. Just watch the calories. And then, of course, for convenience, nothing beats protein shakes or protein powders. Now, the most common protein powder out there is whey protein. This is absolutely useless if you're going to be going on a diet. Because this stuff digests so fast, it's pretty much all digested and gone within an hour. So, what are good protein powders or protein shakes? So, uh, my favorite is a casein based protein. I've got some examples here for you in order of preference. Now, I love this straight casein, uh, but it's a very thick protein shake. Marinda does not like this stuff, it's too thick, and I love it because it keeps me full. The second one on the list is also very thick. Taste is awesome. Here in Canada, it's kind of pricey, but I think in the States you can get it for a decent price. Uh, the third one, that's Marinda's personal favorite. The other two we have tried, uh, they're pretty good, but they're not our favorites. So, how do I come up with an eating plan? First thing you do is you figure out how much protein you need every day. Then, you will be eating six evenly spaced small meals a day and you will be eating one sixth of your daily protein in each meal. Also, right after a workout, you will or you should have a protein shake plus one piece of fruit, such as a banana for example, not a watermelon or something like that, or a strawberry, I mean something decent sized. Uh, Grapefruit's a good example too, or maybe even a, an apple, or a small handful of raisins, or some grapes. And as I mentioned before, veggies, people, go for it. I don't think anybody could ever get fat by eating these vegetables on this list. Now, another question that people often ha ask me is, how fast can I expect to lose fat? Now the answer to that question depends on how much you're willing to cut your calories by. In the extreme case, where you go for a pure protein sparing modified fast and you just eat your one gram of protein per pound per day, you can lose well, I've got the calculation here, but I'll give you an example. A 156-pound person can lose 3 pounds of fat per week doing this. Now, please note, this is the maximum possible rate. In reality, you might probably lose a little bit less than this. If the same person decides to cut calories less drastically and cut down to, say, 9.5 calories per pound intake per day, they can still expect to lose one and a half pounds of fat per week. Now people, the more fat you have, the easier it is to lose it. If you have a lot of fat and you cut calories, you won't get as hungry as somebody who doesn't have a lot of fat. So depending on what your starting point is and in how much of a hurry you are to get to where you want to be, you want to eat probably somewhere between 5 and 12 calories per pound of body weight per day. Right, now that we know what we should be eating and how much, here's a couple things that we should be doing. This will keep us on track. First of all, people, you have to keep a food log. This is not optional. If you want to succeed, you have to write down everything that you put in your mouth. 
This food log will be your most potent tool in your battle against fat. Another thing that is just as important is you have to keep an exercise log. Every time you go to the gym, for every exercise and for every set, you write down how much weight you were able to lift for how many repetitions. If you're not making progress in the gym, or even worse, if you're losing strength, then you know there's something wrong with your diet and you have to fix that quickly. So now let's look at a couple of dieting pitfalls. The first is what I call diet saboteurs. These are people who for various reasons of their own do not want you to succeed. It could be somebody who realizes that hey I actually need to do something about my own body but they don't have the guts to do that so they'd rather see you fail than to try themselves. An example of what a diet saboteur could do is uh, they could sit in front of you while you're dieting they could sit in front of you stuffing their faces with something that they know you like very much like chocolates or chocolate chip cookies or anything that they know you really like but you can't have people avoid these people sometimes this is not easy because well you might be married to one of them but really you need people to support you surround yourself with people that are gonna support you this is very important the next thing is uh, do not expect perfection from yourself people nobody is perfect so the first time that you eat something that you weren't supposed to eat don't just give up and say oh what the heck I'll finish the whole bag if you had one chocolate chip cookie or if you had a spoonful of ice cream or so don't say oh what the heck I have already failed I'm just gonna finish the whole container of ice cream people get back on that horse and ride it it's not that one failure that's going to determine your success overall it's the 99 percent of the time that you do follow your diet we all stumble from time to time but it's the people who get up that will make it so another thing that you might run into is what I call wishes and stalls now if you go on a diet your weight seldom decreases smoothly and predictably for example your weight loss might stall you might be dieting for say a week two, even three and the scale would just absolutely refuse to move and then one morning you wake up and whoosh you're six pounds lighter so people even though you can't see anything happening in your body it doesn't mean that it isn't happening be patient and you will reap the rewards if you're tracking your calories and you're making sure that you are eating enough of the right stuff and not too many calories overall you will lose fat never give up if you ever run into a situation like this just know eventually you will wake up one morning and the expected weight loss will be there okay now I'm going to show you a quick example of a food log see this is just an example don't take the numbers too seriously this is just to show you what you should be writing down the important information using this you can track your calorie intake for a day, your protein intake, and uh, everything important. If you fill this out every day, you can have some idea of the expected amount of fat you should be losing, and you can compare that to what you're actually losing. And if there's a big discrepancy between the two, you will know that somewhat something will need to be something will need to be fixed. Okay, now I'm just going to quickly show you an example of an exercise log. Once again, don't take the weights and stuff that I've wrote down here 
too seriously. This is just an example. I'm just trying to point out that for every exercise and for every single set, I can always look back and tell how well I did, how much weight I was able to lift and for how many repetitions. Like I said before, if you're not making progress in the gym, something somewhere is wrong and you will need to tweak your diet. Well, that's about as much as I have time for today. I'm sure there will be lots of questions and uh, all I can say is good luck. You're starting on a very, very important journey here and uh, the payoff will be awesome. Just stick with it. Bye.